with uh, Klaus Perinhagen and Sergio Doppliche on the um, superselection structure of uh, quantum electrodynamics. And I would have been delighted to talk about that had the good ideas been supported by enough results. As that's not the case, I've had to rely on the retrospective nature of the title to this conference, and I will tell you what cohomology has, uh, um, how cohomology has been used in algebraic quantum field theory. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, uh, a brief, very brief introduction to cohomology. It's not just used in algebraic quantum field theory, but is an important part of mathematics and is so ubiquitous as to form part of essentially any mathematical theory. It comes in many, many varieties, but there are also unifying aspects. I will begin with an example, an example which has a certain similarity with its use in superselection structure. The example is the theory of locally trivial G bundles. So there is a, a bundle F over B, and being locally trivial, it means that there exists an open covering, OI of B, and isomorphisms phi I from F restricted to OI to the trivial bundle, OI cross G. Then, if you just compute phi I, phi J to the minus one, in the point XG, you find that it has the form X, ZIG, ZIJ, G, for X in the intersection of OI and OJ, and that ZIJ satisfies an identity, which is written there, ZIJ, ZJK is equal to ZIK in the for when OI, OJ, OK is not empty. And this is the one co-cycle identity. Furthermore, if you're given such a one co-cycle, you can construct a bundle F of Z, but the mapping from a bundle F of Z corresponding to a one co-cycle Z but the correspondence from Z to FZ is not a 1-1 one -one correspondence. Instead, you need uh, equivalence relations. And the two one co-cycles are equivalent or cohomologous if you can find uh, YI in G such that ZIJYJ is equal to YIZIJ for OI intersection OJ non-empty. And this corresponds to the equivalence of G bundles. And from this one example, you can see certain typical features. Cohomology has a degree. I've written Z there. It would have been better, I think, to have written N0, because although it's, it is sometimes Z, it's more typical to have N0 as the uh, index for the degree. And in low degree, as we had an example, N is equal to 1. Cohomology classifies something. The H1 of BG, these are the cohomology classes, and they classify locally trivial G bundles. The second point is that cohomology is the cohomology of some type of mathematical object. This is the first variable, B. Here it's the check cohomology of a topological space. Then there is the second variable, and this, these are the coefficients of the cohomology, and here that's the group G. And how, do, how can it help? It may help to provide examples. Using this notion of cohomology, you could construct locally trivial fiber bundles, locally trivial G bundles. It may help you in the general theory. And it's very often the case that cohomology classes, which is what you're interested in, that these can be computed by cohomology methods. But it may prove just to be an alternative language. And I give you one example. The problem of the existence of a field algebra and a gauge group boils down with a little simplification to asking whether the 6J symbols of the relevant tensor category, which form a 3 co cycle, are actually a 3 co, three -co boundary. If that is the case, then there are 3J symbols which can be used to embed the category in the category of Hilbert spaces. 
I proved this result in 1972, and I was very pleased at the time, but I must say it had nothing to do with the solution of the problem which came many, many years later. Um, it was essentially of no use at all. Mm -hmm. So let's pass on to superselection theory. As you probably all know, there is, you begin with a superselection criterion that you look at representations which space-like to some double cone are equivalent to the vacuum representation space-like to that double cone. Um, and this for all, all double cones O. This means that there exists a unitary which depends upon the double cone which intertwines from pi to pi zero. And you identify pi zero of A with A. Then you set rho of A is equal to V pi of A V star. And rho becomes an endomorphism of the local net localized in O. And that's the way things went. They might have gone a little differently. One might have used cohomology. So let's think about that. As, uh, to begin with, we have, to, we have this set of double cones, O. And I will define for you what a zero simplex of this set of double cones, O. That's simply an element of, the, of K. A one simplex, a one simplex should be thought of as, a, as an interval. And that consists of three elements, three elements because they're the two vertices of the interval and the interval itself with the property that uh, the two vertices are smaller than the, than the interval. Uh, the interval is the support of this uh, one simplex B. The, uh, there is a two simplex and uh, that will be therefore a, a triangle. And to define a triangle, you need the three uh, one simplices, which are the um, sides of the triangle. And they have to satisfy compatibility conditions, which are written there, which simply say that the, the vertices correspond. And then there has to be a further element corresponding to the triangle itself, which is this, uh, the support of C, which has to be larger than all the, um, all the other simplices. All, yeah. Then if you pick now... I've written A instead of O because A is just an element of K as O was. And uh, you set Z of B is equal to V of D0 of B, V of D1 of B star. Then you get a one co-cycle. Z of D1 of C is equal to Z of D0 of C, the C is missing, Z of D2 of C. Um, and it follows from du duality that Z of B is an element of the local algebra A of the support of B. So that this is a cohomology which is a little bit more complicated than the cohomology I started with because it has uh, local coefficients as does sheet cohomology. And this type of cohomology I have called, I have called net cohomology. Now, um, uh, there are also these endomorphisms, uh, Y of A, with the property that Z of B is an intertwiner from Y of D1 of B to y of d0 of b. So we've got back to the endomorphisms which were on the, on the last uh, slide. Um, and uh, we see here this simplicial structure. So we have the simplicial, the simplices of k. That's a typical feature of, of cohomology. Um, and it was there in the first example because there a, a one simplex would be indices ij with the property that oi oj is uh, non-empty the intersection of oi oj is non-empty and similarly for for two simplices uh, however of course there's one comment to make here that if you think of this as a starting point for the theory of, of super selection rules then it requires more concepts and it looks more complicated although it's very natural to look at it this way but uh, for this reason, I think that uh, um, the work, most of the early work on super selection theory, let's say the work also of, of Buchholz and Friedenhagen on cone-like uh, localization, this was done in this picture of localized endomorphisms and not in the picture of, of uh, one co-cycles. 
Now, uh, so cohomology didn't play such a, a large role initially. There were certain results. The uh, first one was actually where I introduced this type of cohomology, and it's the only paper I ever wrote on two dimensions. And the, the main feature there was this explanation of, of solitons, how they fit into this picture. Uh, we're in two space dimensions, and we have A, which is the observable algebra, and it's included in F, which is the field algebra. And now I take a, a one co-cycle. If this one co-cycle is a one co-cycle of, of A, then it's also a one co-cycle of F. And when you're in two uh, dimensions, then there are two sets of localized endomorphisms which are associated with a, um, with a one co-cycle because you can localize it on the left or you can localize it on the right. So you have two sets of, of localized endomorphisms, Y L of A and uh, uh, Y R of A. Now, if this, you start with a one co-cycle of A, satisfying the, which comes from the super selection criteria, then you will find that Y L of A is equal to Y R of A. However, if you look at this one, same one co-cycle as a one co-cycle of F, then there is no reason for that to happen. Y L of A can be different from Y R of A. And that's the soliton phenomenon. Uh, this was rediscovered uh, many years later uh, by Baird and Longo and called alpha induction. Then a, a second problem that was solved using this, uh, this cohomology was the question of the completeness of sectors, which was 1980, um, for the free field. That was, so to speak, a question. It wasn't obvious how to find a solution to that. Uh, you have a free field with a gauge group G, so the observables are defined as the fixed point algebra under this gauge group. And it's easy to see that there is a sector corresponding to each irreducible representation of, of G. So the question was whether, there, in fact, there were other sectors which... Um, and uh, you can give these two conditions, A and B, of a cohomological nature, which guarantee that there are no other sectors. And this is, so you take the intersection of the algebra F of O plus the support of B primed, for all B primed with the same boundary as B, and this has to turn out to be the algebra which is generated by O and D0 of B, and that generated by O and D1 of B. That's the first condition, this for all B. The second condition is, says that if you have uh, space-like separation, O of D, D0 of B is space-like to O of D1 of B, then uh, the algebra that is generated by f of O plus D0 of B and f of O plus D1 of B is canonically isomorphic to f of O D0 of B tensor with f of O plus D1 of B. Um, and these are abstract conditions, but they're abstract conditions that can be verified in the case of the, of the free field. Now, I, um, many years later, I gave this problem of the of completeness of super selection sectors for the Streeter and Weil model to Cholly for his his dissertation, and it's not an easy problem. And uh, he, he had to continue working on to this when after he had got his his doctor's degree. And I think that's what I've heard from him. He's now at the point of submitting a paper with a positive solution to this to this problem. Uh, another uh, early use of cohomology, which I must admit you don't need to use cohomology, is the concept of essential duality. Duality AD is equal to A, where AD is defined as written up there. Essential duality, I mean, like essential self-adjointness, is defined as ADD is equal to AD. And the result was that the uh, super selection sectors for a 
are equal, uh, equivalent to the super selection sectors for ADD. I should say that these uh, Z1 of A and Z1 of ADD are thought of here as, uh, as C star categories and because they're not only the co-cycles themselves, but they're the co-boundaries or the, the mappings between these, these co-cycles. And uh, an interesting feature of essential duality is that wedge duality, which is uh, known to be satisfied, can imply essential duality. And another result is that the set of representations which satisfy essential duality, that this is, because you can define it for other representations as well, this is actually closed under direct sums and, uh, and sub-representations. <coughs> and that's of interest if you want to do super selection sector relative to some state which is not a pure state. Um, um, for example, a temperature state. Uh, in the absence of duality, a representation satisfying the super selection criterion, which I consider as a, an object of a, another C star category, rep perpendicular of A, this yields a one co-cycle in the dual net uh, with an index T which denotes path independent path independent co-cycles, but this is not a very useful result because um, the dual net may not be local, so you can't go further and define tensor products and things like that. And now let me come to curved space-time. I mean, I think this, this revitalized super selection theory because it gave a whole new uh, field of research and there is an obvious question you, you might ask right from the beginning that is how does topology how does the topology and causal structure of space-time affect the super selection structure and I think the first paper which uh, attacked this was a paper by Guido Longo Fersch and myself in uh, 2001 and I should say that uh, uh, only about a third of the paper is about superselection theory. The other is are aspects of field theory on curved space-time. Um, and two results there are listed. First of all, that, that the uh, um, causal complements of these uh, uh, um, one simplices that they have the same number of components as is, the, as is in Minkowski space. And this means that there are no new solitonic ph phenomena. There would be solitonic phenomena natu naturally if you were in two space-time dimensions, but in higher dimensions there are no such phenomena. Um, so that's the negative aspect of this idea that a causal structure can affect the superselection structure. Um, the theory of sectors was shown in this paper that the series of sectors go through if the uh, uh, set of, of regular diamonds, they were what replaced the uh, double cones in this investigation, if this set is, is directed uh, and it involved uh, quite a standard homology, but the interesting part of the problem was remained open here. Set was not directed. Now, um, one result which connects um, topology of the space-time with uh, one co-cycle, this is the following. First of all, that you define the notion of path, but there are two notions of path. One is the usual topological notion of a path. The other one, you start from this partially ordered set, the set of, uh, in this case, of uh, regular diamonds or whatever you will um, and you define a path to be a concatenation of one simplices in the obvious way one simplices is a is an interval an ordered interval and uh, I will always suppose that this K is path connected as in the is the case for regular diamonds and both notions of path lead to a notion of homotopy group so you can have homotopy group defined for M and a homotopy group defined for K. I mean here the first homotopy group, the fundamental group. Um, and there is result 
which connects these two. If you start with a, a space-time manifold, which is arcwise connected, or <laughs> and the Hausdorff, and if K is the basis for the topology of M and consists itself of arcwise and simply connected subsets of M, then the two cohomology groups coincide. This is a result of, of Ruzzi. Uh, now, if you take a, a one co-cycle, and if you have two paths, P and Q, and these paths are equivalent, are homotopic, then in fact Z of P must equal Z of Q. So the, a one co-cycle depends only on the um, homotopy class of the path. A one one co-cycle is extended to paths in the obvious way, you def, uh, because a path is a concatenation of, of one simplices. Um, and if you set for uh, the equivalent, the homotopy class of a path, you define, and one co-cycle Z, you define eta Z of this uh, homotopy class to be Z of B. Then you get a map from one co-cycles, which are equivalent in B of H0, or another way of saying that, which are path independent, to equivalent unitary representations of the homotopy group. Now, uh, there is one physical problem when K is not directed, because in that case, the, the, uh, well, let's say when the Cauchy, Cauchy surfaces of M are compact instead of being locally compact, um, you, there is no infinity. You cannot transport charges to or from infinity, and that plays an important role in, in superselection uh, theory. And I suggested a, a, a solution to this, namely that you should remove one point from the space. I thought of passing to, the Cauchy, to a Cauchy surface and removing one point from that Cauchy surface, but the way that it was then done by Ruzzi uh, is uh, better, which is to define the causal puncture of this K at a point X. These are simply the set of elements of K whose closures are, are space-like to, to X. And that corresponds the same, to the same idea. It's uh, thought of in four dimensions instead of in, in three dimensions. And you can also think in terms of a subset of the space-time manifold. You, you define M of X to be M with uh, a set X of X removed. X of X, this is simply the set of points that can be joined to X by a, 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 causal, a causal curve. And it can also be thought of in terms of the domain of dependence of a Cauchy surface with the point, with the point removed. And uh, considered as a, a, a space-time, M of X is globally hyperbolic, but uh, there is one small snag, namely that an, an element O of K of X need not be a diamond of, of M of X. Um, still, K of X is a basis for the topology of M of X, and uh, M of X being arcwise connected, K of X is pathwise connected. Now, uh, this is a, a more complicated setting for doing super selection theory and there is a strategy which is first that you should look at the super selection sectors for k of x for all x and then glue the results together to describe the super selection theory for for k and the advantage of studying k of x is that it behaves in much the same way as uh, as Minkowski space so uh, You've got the algebra of observables, and you denote by A of X the restriction of this algebra of observables to the partially ordered set K of X. And you assume that A of X satisfies, satisfies duality. Mm. And uh, in fact, uh, a one cycle is always path independent on K of X for each X in M. And that implies that it is also path independent as uh, on K. And as I said, that is the same as one co-cycles being trivial in, in B of H. So that holds in an arbitrary 
four-dimensional, globally hyperbolic space-time. And you now have, will have one co-cycles, z of x for, for each x, uh, path independent, and you want to extend them to uh, a path independent one co-cycle on A. And the condition is very simple. It's the most natural condition that you have. Uh, the two uh, one co-cycles sh should coincide where they must, namely when the support of B is contained in the intersection of K of X1 and K of X2. And there is a, a similar result for arrows between uh, one co-cycles. And uh, super selection theory really comes alive when the endomorphisms are introduced in the sense that you need tensor product structure. If you don't have tensor product structure, the information that is contained in the C star category alone is, doesn't tell you, tell you so very little. Um, but here it is so that this K of X is not necessarily directed. I mean, Remember that was the problem that we we had K is usually not directed and that was the case that we're intending to examine. Um, but in this case you can define these uh, endomorphisms by a, a slight variant on the traditional definition. It's, it's defined uh, as the the endomorphism, as usual, is defined as being locally given by the, by the one co-cycle. That's this formula, yz of a in a is equal to zpa zp star. And that is defined as an all a of o with o uh, space-like, with o1 space-like to o. Um, and there are conditions on the path. Um, and this definition does not depend on the chosen path, and letting O shrink to X, it extends to an endomorphism of the algebra, C star algebra, A perpendicular of X, which is the C star algebra generated by the A of O1 with O1 in K of X. And the fact that this definition works does not depend upon the, uh, the K of X being uh, directed, because that now is not the case, it depends upon the fact that the, um, these O containing X, that they are directed, they're directed downwards, so that you can, can define this consistently. And when you've done it, you find the relations that you have between uh, um, localized endomorphisms and one co-cycles, that the uh, one co-cycle is a um, intertwines between the uh, two endomorphisms, the one in dp and the one in d0 of p, this for any path, and then you also find the usual localization property of uh, um, endomorphisms, localized endomorphisms. And at this point you, you can introduce the tensor product formula, Z1 of T of, uh, of uh, A of X by the usual formula, so the tensor product of two one co-cycles, Z and Z1 in B. This is given you by uh, Z of B. Then you have the endomorphism, YZ in D1 of B. This acts in Z1 of B. And that defines your good tensor product. You need, of course, the tensor product on the arrows. That's T and S are two arrows, but that's uh, very similar. T tensor product with S in A. This is T of A, YZ of A, acting on S of A. Um, and this composition law um, makes Z1T of AX into a, a tensor C star category. Well, um, and of course there are many more aspects to, uh, to super selection theory that I haven't yet touched on. I mentioned some here briefly, um, although I must admit that they don't have anything to do with it, particularly to do with the subject of uh, one cycles here, it's cohomology. Um, 
but uh, the gauge group, then you can define a, a conjugate of it in a, a very simple way. It means that uh, um, y of d0 b, if you have defined using a simple object, then this is actually an automorphism. And being an automorphism, you can invert it. So if you take z b star and then imply y z d0 of b to the minus 1, then you get a conjugate, one co-cycle of the, of the co-cycle z. And then I, this uh, tensor C star category that we have got, uh, the, the one can also define a, a symmetry corresponding to the um, permutation of two of two charges. I won't, there is nothing particularly new about that in this, uh, in this context. And it gives you what is called a symmetric T star uh, category. And I is the identity one co-cycle. And this is irreducible. And uh, if every simple object has a conjugate as it, as it does, then every object with finite statistics also has a, also has a conjugate, and that is a, a result which is, uh, can be proved using the analogy in group theory. If you take, you want to look at a conjugate representation of a, a finite dimensional unitary representation of a group, then it's enough to look at the, its determinant and to invert its determinant and then look at the um, define in terms of that determinant to define a, a conjugate. And then there is this result that if you have a symmetric tensor C star category with, with conjugates, uh, with sub-objects and direct sums, and if each object has a statistical phase one, I mean, that is, it corresponds just to bosons instead of fermions, then T is actually isomorphic to the symmetric tensor C star category of finite dimensional unitary representations of a compact group unique up to isomorphism. That is the result of uh, Sergio Doppler and myself, which was used at this point then to define a, a field algebra and, uh, oh dear, don't know whether I can recall that back to, if we wait a second, okay, I, mean, not, I don't know whether, um, So we're working it too hard today. Yeah, <laughs> it's only. <laughs> 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 not so hot inside. No, it's not hot inside at all. I mean, it must be. Where, where is it hot then? <laughs> Up there. <laughs> In the box, it's hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, countdown. Okay, we're back where we were. Um,
I mean, the results here and the results connected with it are the, so to speak, the uh, large part of the theory of superselection sectors. What we were dealing with before is a much, much smaller part of this. And I've been inserted at this point because at this point we can, uh, um, these results apply to the theory A of X, the theory on the punctured space-time. Um, well, I think I've... Let's go back. Conjugates, there we are. Um, so, this was the, the strategy that we want uh, results, not for not for A of X, but we want results for the cohomology of um, Z1 T of A. And you ha for this, you have to look at the results for Z1 T of A of X for all X. Um, and uh, you, you start then with a one co-cycle Z1 T of A, and you let YZ of X in A denote the endomorphism of this algebra A of uh, perpendicular of X, um, the C star algebra, associated with the restriction of Z to Z1 T of A of X. And these are endomorphisms which depend on X. Um, we haven't defined them for the, the theory on the whole space-time. However, they are compatible, I mean, in the, in the obvious sense that if you look at Z of, in X1 of A and restrict it to A of O, then that equals Y of Z of X2 in A restricted to A of O. Whenever you look at some O which is in the intersection of X of K1 and uh, X of K2. Um, but that's just the intersection, it's not K. I mean, and uh, furthermore, if you have a, a path in K of X1 to K of X2, then YZ of X of A of Z of P is equal to YZ X2 of A of Z of P. Then another result, I didn't explain to you the, the symmetry for Z1 of uh, T of AX, but uh, you can get a symmetry for uh, Z1 T of A by defining E of Z, Z1 in the point A, epsilon of this, this is the symmetry, to be epsilon of X of Z, Z1, uh, provided you take X to be um, space-like to, to A. So this is defined for, then for all A, of course. Um, there is also then the result of this uh, C star category, Z1 T of A, um, that all the objects in it with finite statistics have conjugates. And there is, of course, uh, an obvious question. You would like to know how the super selection structure of uh, Z1, how the super selection structure on the manifold M is related to the super selection structure on the manifold M of X when you've removed a point. And there is a result there, a very interesting result, that, the, that there is a, a restriction tensor functor F of X between the two C star categories, and this is full and faithful. So what does this mean? This meant that if you had a, a super selection sector for, on the manifold M, then there would be a corresponding super selection sector on the manifold M of X. And furthermore, it would, well, they, it's also you need the irreducibility, goes over into irreducibility, but that's part of saying that it's, uh, um, it's full and faithful. What, what you don't know, what you don't know is whether there, is, uh, whether there are super selection sectors of, on M of X which do not extend to, um, to a super selection sector of, of M. And this is the, the problem of the, of the equivalence of local intertwiners and global intertwiners.
Now the last part of this talk has been based on a paper of G. Ruzzi, the homotopy of posets, net cohomology in the theory of superselection sectors in globally hyperbolic space times. I mean he completed the work that was started in this other paper that I mentioned. I I think I probably missed one slide somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Um, and there has been further work by Brunetti and Ruzzi on super selection sector, on super selection theory in the context of locally covariant field theory. And this too makes use of cohomology. And I, as I, in the, I think the latest paper which I have not seen but I have so I rely on what Ruzzi has been telling me there are is a um, and there are one co-cycles that are path dependent you remember in this part we showed that the one co-cycles were path independent and this comes about I mean again it's the theory on curved space time this comes about uh, by changing the super selection criteria um, and this gives one then uh, uh, examples where you have uh, super selection sectors which depend upon the topology of the underlying space time manifold. And uh, as I say, I think we can conclude that in the course of the years, cohomology has turned into the preferred tool for tackling problems in super selection theory and uh, when you can ask what the the reason for this is I mean the localized endomorphisms look much simpler you have a category of localized endomorphisms and you have a category of of one co-cycles and uh, in the simple cases these two categories are equivalent to each other um, and that's the one alternative I know to using cohomology is to use uh, endomorphisms and endomorphisms certainly work well and are therefore are also more simpler when this underlying partially ordered set k is directed and in that case you get endomorphisms of a of m in the case of k of x we also got endomorphisms we got endomorphisms of a perp of x and but they didn't depend upon it being being directed um, they depended upon the set of, of double cones, um, a set of uh, diamonds. But in, in, in general, an endomorphism will need a domain of, of definition. And of course, as we know from the theory of unbounded operators, this is a, a, a big nuisance. Um, and what do you need endomorphisms for? You need them to get, get this tensor product structure going. But uh, the tensor product structure can also be defined directly in terms of these, these co-cycles. I mean, I wrote down the formula with endomorphisms, but here is a formula which just involves uh, one co-cycles because you can substitute the endomorphisms with one co-cycles. So to define the product of Z and Z1, um, this is... Uh, you take the Z of B, the one, one, one co-cycle, and you take not Z1 of B, but you take the adjoint action of Z of P on Z of 1 of B for P, a suitable path. Suitable meaning that the path begins space-like to the support of B and ends in uh, D1 of B. And uh, there is a similar formula for the tensor product of arrows in Z1 of A. And here we, we do not need K to be directed, but just, just connected. Uh, so I think this is the reason. Now, as I said, I, I have skipped one slide. Maybe I should go back and see what was on this. <laughs> I mean, I, one thing that I know, I know that I must have skipped it because I haven't uh, explained to you what this set K is in uh, Ah, here we are. This, at least, this is one. This is the, uh, this is this approach, the first approach to super selection sector in uh, Guido et al. This was based on the notion of a regular diamond, which I didn't explain to you. 
Uh, and these have the disadvantage that their causal complements may not be pathwise connected. And Grotzi proved matters by taking K to be the set of diamonds. Now, I mean, it's, uh, the words are very similar, but the definitions are, are different. There is a definition which is given there, but it's, of course, if you read it like that, it's, uh, it becomes a little, a little technical. This. Um, so, being a diamond, it should be based on some uh, Cauchy surface. And the set on the Cauchy surface is denoted by, by G. And this set on the Cauchy surface is the inverse image of a ball in three space was, um, under a differentiable coordinates on the, for the Cauchy surface. And then you take the domain of dependence of G to get the regular diamond. And this K is a, a base for the topology of M. A, a diamond is open and relatively compact, arcwise and simply connected. And uh, this domain is itself a globally hyperbolic space-time with and the space-like Cauchy surface is just G. And, uh, Furthermore, the causal complement of a, a diamond is uh, pathwise connected in, in K. So, so, okay. So, I've, uh, the two adjacent slides I have explained, and <laughs> therefore I assume there is nothing else which is missing, and that's the end of my talk. of sectors. Yes. And in the case of uh, conformal field theory on the circle, this problem was uh, approached by uh, Longo and Müller and Kawaigashi mm -hmm. in terms of the subdivision of the circle into, into intervals, yeah. which in the cohomological picture means uh, the pair of two simplices. <laughs> yes, right. Field. Yeah. Uh, but if I remember correctly, in order to prove their result, these uh, friends needed a careful analysis of the subfactor which corresponds to the two intervals and the commutant of the complement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, so I wonder where this uh, is hidden in the cohomological approach. And here it seems uh, well, I mean, uh, I, uh, I'm. I quoted Cholly. That's the only thing I did. I mean, I, I mean. Uh, uh, yes. Um, that was a case of two dimensions, where you had the Streeter and Wild model. Yes. Now, um, but so, uh, so, if it's buried anywhere, it's buried in the work of Cholly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not so it's not, not the complete answer. No, it's not the complete answer. No, I think that's always a, a, a relatively so difficult question, which depends upon the case. I mean, it's, or, or as I showed, in, in, in there can be conditions which are sufficient to to uh, imply it. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, let us thank our speaker again.